Good morning. Yesterday morning, we were introduced to Baruch, and today we're going to get to learn a little bit more about him. But what did Baruch learn as he served God, and he got into some persecution experience, and they found out that, hey, serving God doesn't put you on everybody's best uh, side? Let's find out. Our reading today takes us, following chron the chronology of Jeremiah, uh, takes us to Jeremiah 45, and we'll just do all of the chapter, all five verses right here today. The word that Jeremiah the prophet spoke to Baruch, the son of Neriah, when he had written these words in a book at the instruction of Jeremiah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to you, O Baruch, you said, Woe is me now, for the Lord has added grief to my sorrow. I fainted in my sighing and find no rest. Thus you shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, Behold, what I have built I will break down, and what I have planted I will pluck up. That is this whole land. And do you seek great things for yourself? Do not seek them, for behold, I will bring adversity on all flesh, says the Lord. But I will give you your life to you as a prize in all places wherever you go. So Baruch was called to be an assistant to Jeremiah. All these messages that Jeremiah gave that everybody hated so much, they thought they were a bunch of sour grapes and bad messages, and the guy only speaks things that we don't like to hear. God said, I want you to be a, a uh, helper to that guy. So Baruch is going to follow through and be Jeremiah's helper. In fact, if you read the Bible, you'll find that both Old Testament and New Testament, you'll see different servants of God had helpers. God often teams people up. Even Moses got Aaron. Now, as we read verses 3 to 5, we begin to be able to infer some things about Baruch's experience. It seems like he had a, a big plan for his life. He had certain things he wanted to do. He wanted to go into a certain line of, of work and do that, but God called him to be Jeremiah's helper, and he knew that wasn't going to look very good on his resume in Jerusalem. So he sounds like he was a little bit peeved and unhappy that it was his business called to serve and be Jeremiah's assistant. And God's answer to him is, I'm going to build up the things I build up, and I'm going to tear down the things I tear down. And you have an opportunity, Baruch, to work with me and, and be in the front lines. I mean, Baruch made it, made it into the Bible as one of the good guys. Baruch gets to be in the front line. He sees the front line action with Jeremiah and all the things going on there. Baruch was actually very blessed, but at the time he felt like his, his career was being cut short and it was going to be a, a rough deal. I think it was a rough deal. Yes, I think it was. But the benefit, Baruch gets to serve the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I mean, top that. You know what the truth is? We all prefer to have it easier. We always want easier going. And yet, character is built in ways that are usually a lot more, there has to be a lot more engagement, a lot more activity, a lot more resistance and challenges. So God knows what he's doing when he's building our character. And he knew what he was doing when he put Baruch in to be Jeremiah's assistant. And God told Baruch, look, I'll tell you what, no matter how hard it is, I'm going to make sure I'm going to give you your life. I want you to know it. Your life is preserved. God gave Baruch an insurance policy there. I'm with you. If you don't depart from me, you're, everything's going to be fine. Let's you and I remember, maybe in the end of time, we will get to be some of God's assistants. Maybe we will be uh, helping out in some which way in getting the kingdom. Of course, we should. And God has a wonderful plan for your life and for mine so that we can be his helpers in finishing the kingdom. Let's pray that we will be faithful. Let's take him up on his promises and his blessings. It's going to be, it's going to be wild and it's going to be thrilling to be on God's side as we see the last events unfold. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be right. Uh, we easily slip back and kind of say, well, no, let somebody else take the exciting part. We'll just watch on the sidelines. But Lord, help us. Help us to be engaged in the battle and uh, help us to be your assistants in any which way you have for us. Help us to be faithful and right. Yes, we're going to be persecuted, and Baruch got a taste of that. We're going to have a taste of that. May we be faithful to you anyway. We ask for that help in Jesus' name. Amen. So Baruch gets a front row seat as God is going to humble the kingdom of Judah. You and I get to have a front row seat as God humbles the nations at the very end of time. I mean, this is, this is going to be intense. God be with you today as you serve him this day.